guys, welcome back to the channel, Confessions of a Dollar Tree Addict. I am Marina, and this is actually a long-awaited part two to the day that I shopped with Rhonda's haul. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten back to you guys. I It's been really preying on my mind, but like some of you might have heard me say in the past, my husband actually had very, very bad back injury a couple of years ago. He underwent like a 13-hour double two a two layer spinal fusion surgery so it's been snowing like a lot in new york and the weather's been really crazy and although modern medicine swears that the weather does not have anything to do with back pain or joint pain we believe it does because every single time and he has like metal in his spine and had all kinds of like bone regrowth therapy i mean it's a miracle he had to learn to walk again but and it's currently snowing right now. So he's actually comfortably sleeping. And I decided, you know what, let me try to get a video done because he has been in excruciating pain. It's been torture. He doesn't take any um, painkillers or anything like that. We actually got last night, in case anyone is interested in knowing, I figure I would let you guys hear of it. Um, we got a prescription for a muscle relaxer, non-addictive, non-narcotic medicine. I think they only prescribe medicine like that but we were actually able to meet with a doctor for $19 online because no one was available. It's Saturday in New York, middle of the night, and he just couldn't take it anymore, and I couldn't either. And they gave him a prescription to a medication that actually helped him a little bit, you know, be able to get at least some rest. And uh, it was all done over the computer. It was pretty amazing. So, and they called it into the pharmacy, and I went and picked it up. And it was a relief because he's very stubborn and he's been trying to get in touch with his doctor, but we think that his surgeon may be working in a COVID unit or something because no one's able to get in touch with him. And that happens a lot. A lot of doctors have taken up new, I don't know, a lot of doc, a lot of regular doctors that don't normally work in emergency rooms have, have started working in emergency rooms to pitch in and it's really hard to get in touch with them. So it's been a lot, but I'm here today and I want to do this haul. I'm actually wearing like my house clothes so and I just put on like some very little makeup because we're not doing anything. There's a blizzard happening. If I open the door, you guys will see blizzard. Maybe I'll be able to do some craft videos after this video because I do have hours. He's taking a nap and he will be watching the Super Bowl later no matter what. So we'll see what happens. Um, the first things, I'm, I'm just gonna go right into the haul because I really have four Dollar Tree's worth of haul to share with you guys and I don't even know if it's gonna get done in four videos and this is part two. So before it becomes obsolete, let's definitely get into it. The very first thing I wanna share is in a huge box so I wanna share that and get it out of the way. It is this. Now I did buy this for boys but the Dollar Tree that I went to, um, where did I find these? Le Levittown had four cases of this. And the ladies there kind of know me now they because I do give my tax ID. And she was like, you know, we have one more. You should buy a case. And I was like, yeah, I will. I was like, those are amazing. They're, it, they're made in Germany. They're very popular. They're not cheap. And... I think that the girls one is even, I mean, I guess because I never had a girl, I specifically love girl toys, but the girl pack is just adorable. It has so many cute things in it. I don't know what that one is with the helmet. The girl pack is seriously adorable. It has um, a fairy princess. Okay, like, a, like an actual fairy. It has wings. Not a princess, a fairy. It has like a steampunk lady do you see this cute outfit and then it has like a geisha i don't know i think she's a female boxer or wrestler then it has like a female pirate it has like a female astronaut so it's not like it doesn't have cool walks of life for women it just specifically has girl packs and boy packs and uh i don't know i think it's cute i really love these toys they're beautiful 
I really don't know what that one with the helmet is because she has like a ray gun. So maybe she's an alien, a female alien. I have no idea. But they're awesome. There are a lot of figures. It's series 16. I don't know. This is an incredible score. In my opinion, it, was, it wasn't cheap. Maybe they were looking to get rid of them because I don't know them that well. They've never offered me a case in that Dollar Tree. Um, but the girl there, the, the lady that works in that store, I guess she's gotten to know me lately. And I do like always hunt out toys and I'll get like 10 or 12, but I never get a case. And I always tell her how I have to find more cases or find more. So she was like, oh, we have four out and we have a case in the back. Do you want it? I was like, yeah. And I think there's 48 in here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's 48 of these. These are definitely going for Easter. These are 100% Easter. And so are the boys ones. And I'm really excited about that. I think it's really cute. They'll look nice in Easter baskets. They'll be able to hold up candy because they kind of have like a little stiffness to them. The, the plastic, the metal paper can hold things up when I tape it to them. So if I make actual Easter baskets, they'll look good in the basket. So I'm very psyched about it. I don't think I have any other toys in this haul. They didn't really have anything in abundance. And at this point, I have to buy toys that come in abundance. It's not for a Christmas giveaway. Whatever I give is going to be out in the open, and I need a lot of it to distribute it evenly for other... Because Christmas is the only time you could get away with not having, like, 50 or some huge number of things. Otherwise, it just doesn't seem fair. So, yeah. So, so I only bought that case, and I was kind of shocked to find it. I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do books and DVDs because they're right in front of me. And I would like to get them because it's snowy and we might, maybe my son and I will watch them. My son doesn't really care for the Super Bowl or, well, he might watch it. He, he'll ping pong between the both of us. But um, I did get him this DVD called Ironclad Battle for Blood. I don't know, but he loves medieval type movies. And it says from the director of Ironclad comes a new chapter in savage medieval warfare. Um, this is the kind of movie that my son will love. I don't know what's it, what, as long as it's medieval and maybe has some sorcery and a dragon here or there, he'll love it. I don't know what it's about. If anybody's ever seen it, let me know. But it's a Blu-ray for a buck. I thought it would be something he'd be interested in. And I definitely picked that up. Then I did find this and I thought it was kind of funny. My son and I love to watch like paranormal activity type of DVDs and make fun of them. And, uh, this is called Ghost Hunters. It's a whole season, season nine, part one. Um, we can't watch it with my husband. It drives him crazy because we have ADHD. We could totally watch a show and talk the whole way through it, making fun of it. But when my husband is watching a show with us and we do that, he wants to like, bro is brain. He's like, oh, you guys have no idea how hard it is to watch a TV show with two people with ADHD. And I'm like, well, we're not really even watching this. We're sort of like making fun of it. He's like, yeah, but you guys are actually talking through it and following it. And I, I can't. I got to go like I'm going to watch something else. So when my son and I watch things alone, we just become like this giant ball of crazy. And uh, it's the hit series from sci-fi, which I, I don't know. I We probably have watched it and made fun of it, but I'm not sure if I have because um, I know we've watched the other one, the, oh no, maybe we have watched Ghost Hunters. I don't recognize these people. I don't know, but it's uh, season nine, part one. So I'm assuming they just go from place to place hunting ghosts. I don't think it's got a plot or anything. And I think it'll probably be really funny to watch it and make fun of it. And uh, for a dollar, that's a good time always. And then for an actual good movie to watch, I did pick up The Jungle Book because it's the Jungle Book for a dollar. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm definitely going to give this to someone that is interested or save it for when I do the DVD um, giveaways at Christmas time. I do collect DVD players year round from garage sales or I'm always checking eBay or Mercari or all those other websites. I find a DVD player that comes up inexpensive, like a portable DVD player that comes up at a really inexpensive price, I always pick it up. You'd be surprised how often you find them at garage sales or estate sales, usually for five or $10, but that is like a really great score because the shelters don't have cable. So 
you know, to keep a kid occupied on like their own little thing so that if you have like a tablet or something and you're a mom and you want to watch a TV show or do something and you could get that little portable DVD player and have your kid watch it, it saves your sanity. So I do always try to get those and I always buy DVDs because I know that they come in really handy and this can go to that stockpile. I might even watch it before I donate it. It doesn't make a difference, but the Jungle Book for a dollar, I think is amazing. Amazing for a dollar, very good deal. I have like some really interesting book finds, one of which I actually hauled like a month ago, but I've been reading it and forgot to share it with you guys. Now this one, this isn't the one that I got a month ago, Living Life, uh, Living a Life You Love. This is called Living a Life You Love by Joyce Meyer. I don't know if you guys know who Joyce Meyer is, but she's like a Christian, I guess, kind of like evangelist, televangelist. I don't know. Sometimes I like her, sometimes I don't. That's honestly the truth. But I've never read any books by her. I've watched her on TV. I think I had like a calendar by her that had like a bunch of like inspirational quotes in it. But um, for a dollar, I decided to pick it up. Oh, this is interesting. She has an Oscar Wilde quote in her book. I love Oscar Wilde. Um, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That is all. So, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. By Oscar Wilde. I love that. It's It was just a dollar. It looks like it's an easy read. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to get out of it. I'm I like to read about all different faiths and I don't know. I just like to explore things. God has an amazing plan for you. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Okay. All right. I'm going to read it. I'm intrigued. I'm I have listened to her. Sometimes I think she's a little a little too preachy, but I don't know. I don't know. I'll read it and see what I how I feel about it. And then I found this Astonishing World of Art and um, it's kind of amazing. It seems like it's a kid's book, but it really isn't. So it says, Brandon Bird's Astonishing World of Art, stickers, postcards, full color art, coloring pages, paint by numbers, hours of fun. Now, it has like actual paintings. You know, these are famous people. I forget. Kind of interesting. Is that Christopher Walken? Yep, that's Christopher Walken when he's young. That's probably why I picked this book up because I love Christopher Walken a lot. Oh my God, it says cut along the dotted line to make your own Christopher Walken mask. Okay, that's just weird. But what I thought was really interesting and it does have like color by numbers in it and stuff like that. But what I thought was really interesting is that it teaches you these two pictures and it's sort of like trying to teach you. It says... Can you spot the difference between these two pictures? I mean, obviously it's the face, but it also is kind of teaching you how to really figure out like where the painting changed because there's a lot of similarities and it kind of helps you gain perspective on how to be art, like to do art. And then there's a part where you fill it in and finish it where it helps you like I don't know my son I think my son is gonna like this I'm gonna put it in his Valentine stash strange book actually it has like a an unscramble the word it has a lot of strange like it's got like a lot of random things from television shows and a lot of uh SVU which he doesn't really watch but every once in a while he sees us watching it and he'll ask us what's happening but uh it says what's the verdict unscramble the letters below to find out and it says L Y T I G you so obviously it's guilty but it's just random little tasks but then there is a part which I'm trying to find where you finish the painting the guys from or the original that my husband and I have been watching that's our pandemic programming <laughs> so bizarro but for a dollar I found it to be really interesting it definitely has my attention for a sh you know some period of time there is Showcase different artists' paintings. This is an actual painting that was painted in 2004 of Christopher Walken. There's another one with Nicolas Cage. My son is very artistic and he loves art. So I kind of thought that he would like that. So like this is like Nicolas Cage. It's a real painting that somewhere in the world someone painted. It's famous. And it shows it. But oil paintings. 
but there's a part that teaches like technical drawing. Those paintings are available to paint by number or color by number. That's the Nicolas Cage one. That's kind of amazing. For a dollar, that's pretty, pretty cool. But there is one where you finish, I, I keep saying this and I'm getting, I'm annoying myself, I'm sorry. I don't know why I can't find it because I, oh, ha, Bob Ross. This is such a, like, see, like, things like this. It says, use your imagination to design a different hairstyle for Nicolas Cage. So first it had, so first it had you look at the two similarities or differences in that other picture. And now it's taking this and telling you to, like, change up how he looks. So it's kind of teaching, like, technical art. Like the, you could like kind of figure out how to change how you're drawing things. Because maybe in your head you could, you know, visualize how you want to make something look, but be, the technical aspect of it is a whole other world. If you can't do it, you can't do it. So I think he might get something out of this. I don't know. For a dollar, I definitely think it's interesting. It's not like babyish, like super baby babyish, but it's also, you know, I don't know. I think that it's, I think it's something he'll like. And if not, it was only a dollar. I could always pass it on. But for a dollar, I think it was really worth it. And now this, the next book is a showstopper, you guys. Literally a beautiful showstopper. It's called The Cottage Book. In my last video, I shared with you that I bought the book Zen as Bleep. And it's like a journal. It starts with the F word. You guys know. And then the other one was like ramblings of my mind or something like that. And it's like very kaleidoscopy. But when I found this cottage book, this should have been in that whole on on like uh, ensemble of beautiful, amazing books that I found because Rhonda sent me that vibe because I love this book. This is the type of book that I will keep forever and always look inside of for inspiration. Just look at that. That right there is like everything I would love to have. First of all, I always wanted to have a house that has these transcend windows next to the doors and that's kind of on my wish list of homes in florida i want a doorway like that because i want a house that has like spanish stucco so that i can paint you know have the natural stucco and then paint all the trim like beautiful like super florida colors it's not even that wild in florida that's very common in florida but i love that i love that i'm actually probably going to paint my door that color before i leave here anyway just because I think it'll make it more appealing um, and saleable. But I just took one look at this and I was like, I am in love. Look at those cute, like cottages have to have nooks. You need nooks of things. You have to have a place for your things. And cottages are usually small. So in this book, part one, The Cottage Spirit. So here's the book's forward. Really beautiful picture. Exactly what I, I love. Black Eye Susans. That's all I have to say next to my teal door. It's like everything. Um, so here's the forward. I remember sitting on a cottage porch many years ago after swimming in the ocean all day. My mother brushed my wet hair into a tidy, neat ponytail, her deliberate brush strokes seeming to move in time with the waves. The furniture on the white porch consisted of two rockers, just like my house, a white porch swing. I wish we don't have that kind of space. And a card table where we often played double solitaire. Life in this little college made a big impression on me even as a child. And throughout the years, some of my happiest moments have revolved around cottage life. It's my favorite way of living. Pure and sweet like good local honey. There is a clarity and freedom in the air that allows wonderful pleasures to happen spontaneously. The kind of pleasures that are woven into rich and colorful occasions that bind families and friends together. College life entails a complete and utter lack of pretension. The simple houses we choose for this book are found in a wide range of landscapes, seaside, countryside, woodland, but they all have several things in common. Simplicity, comfort, and close connection to nature. Oh my God, I love this book so much. I do, oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And that's their cottage so cute the little yeah that is so cute I love this deck too I love it that's kind of like my place and and then it just shows you like different pictures just beautiful simple homey comfortable homes I love homey homes that's what it is oh my gosh look at that look at that I have rounded windows too because they give in more light but I have tiny ones 
we actually added those in. They have a gorgeous sink. Love it. Just country, cottage, beachy, worn in, comfortable, beautifulness. That chair is everything. I used to have furniture painted like that, but it just, it was too big actually for this house. And I, I got like a simpler table, but I'm going to get painted furniture. I like country painted furniture like this. This is my style. This is my like yellow and greens. I'm not really a white farmhouse style kind of girl. I know everybody loves farmhouse, but see, this is me. Very me. I love this bed, this quilt. I'm like obsessed with this book. I can't, I could literally sit here and read you guys every page, but I am not going to. So I'm going to try to get through this kind of quickly, but I did feel like I found some crazy good books. I was looking for kids books because I've seen people hauling awesome books, but this is like the only even child centered book that I found. And I kind of feel like these are crafts for me and kids because I would do these crafts myself. It says, and they're really, really cute. It says, um, the perfect introduction to the exciting world of crafts with easy to follow instructions contains brilliant activity for rainy days, party games, and seaside vacations. Now, I'll tell you what really won me over, and I think it's just marvelously brilliant. They made these beautiful sailboats out of driftwood and like fun tack and a stick and some pretty fabric, which you could always get fabric from leftover like jeans or, you know, clothing that your kids outgrow. I have a bag full of really cute fabric that I didn't buy a stitch of fabric. I just have clothes that either got a stain or got a tear or are missing a button. I'm so not replacing. I have plenty of clothes and I can always get more. So, you know, when I find something that I like the fabric of and then it gets used up, I always save that fabric if I think it could be used for a holiday or something like that. So this is something fun to like all winter set aside a couple pairs of jeans or a couple of cute men's your husband shirts or whatever and then when you're on vacation find some driftwood and make those those are so cute and then like if you go to a lake or something you can you know launch them they're just really beautiful kids crafts in this book but that boat one really got me and I'll just share and there's like these cute little they almost look like the ugly dolls but they're made out of lost mittens and um gloves how brilliant and cute is that and it takes like rudimentary sewing and then these beautiful flags are made out of plastic cut out from bags. So cute. Just really cute. Recycled, upcycled kids crafts. Salt dough letters. You're making these out of the like fake Play-Doh basically that you can make at home. And you just paint them. And honestly, they're gorgeous. This is like a really good Easter craft right here. You can write Easter with your kids with the letters and then paint them in East. I, I mean, it's so cute. You could do that while doing your Easter eggs. It would be so fun. I really love it. I kind of feel like you can make rugs like this, like rag rugs. I don't know. I never thought of weaving them like that. I find this one to be intriguing and I'm going to consider using fabric and trying something. I don't know. I just love I love upcycling things. I hate waste when, when you could take something that's kind of lost its luster and then turn it into something useful all over again. I love that. Anyhow, the name of the book is Green Crafts for Children. It's marvelous. It was a buck. I'm going to definitely thumb through it and then I'm going to pass it on to some friends. I do have some friends that have like recently got a glue gun and a driftwood tic-tac-toe board. Kids would love to make that just for the heck of it. You know, it's not like a forever thing, but it's so cute. It's really cute. I love it. I just love things like that. I love them. I did get, this is the book that I got a while ago. And I mean a while ago, a few weeks ago when, uh, toward, like right after Christmas, but I started reading it and I forgot to share it with you guys. And it's really kind of amazing. It's called the Hoponopono. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. I actually had heard of it. So when I saw, I just actually saw this part sticking out and I was like, Dr. Matt James, I wonder if he wrote something else. I wonder if it's the same one. And I pulled it out and I was like, what? It's the Hoponopono, but I haven't had the book in a long time. This is a really interesting book. 
If you guys have not ever read it, I would read it. I would get it. I, I'm If you don't find it at the Dollar Tree, get it anyway. It is a really interesting book on the concept of forgiveness and um, self-care, I, I guess would be the best way to call it. It's an ancient Hawaiian um, process, for lack of a better word, because I just read it here. I'm not trying to be slick. I couldn't think of it. Um, so the ho oponopono is not about the other person. It's about you, which is kind of like, you know, Buddhism and everything. You have everything you need inside of you. The ho oponopono is called the ancient Hawaiian forgiveness process. But according to Dr. Matt James, that's not quite accurate. So Hoponopono is about release, releasing pain from the past that enslaves you in the present, releasing old perception of those you love so your relationships are alive and fresh, even releasing those who have died so your grief can shift into a new appreciation. Though consistent through consistent use of practices like Hoponopono, ancient Hawaiians were almost completely devoid of mental and emotional diseases. They knew what modern medical science has since verified, that holding a grudge affects not only you emotionally, but it also related to physical issues with heart disease, compromised immune system, and increased stress. Now that science understands the importance of forgiveness and release, many teachers and trainers are promoting Ho'oponopono. Their intentions are good, but they miss the mark. It's not just about the words. For true healing... You need to understand how to tap into the energy of the Ho Oponopono. So that is Dr. Matt James. I did read many, many, many years ago when I was in a really dark place. I had found the universe brought to me a lot of different spiritual healing from all different faiths that really completed me on many levels. But um, when I found this, I don't have I didn't have a copy of this. It's not always that easy to find either, but um, when I, I guess because I'm cheap and I don't like to buy things new or whatever, but I didn't have a copy of this for many years. Definitely since I moved, I had, I, whenever I find a book that I love that changes me uh, or changes my, I guess, DNA on some level, I always feel that I need to pass that book on to someone else that needs it. And then I end up buying a bunch of them and sharing them. And then of course you move on to some other really uplifting or spiritually enhancing book, or at least I do. So, uh, and over the years, I've had a lot of books that have like really changed my mindset on things, and I always share them with people. Um, but I didn't have a copy of this anymore. So when I found it, I was like, huh, it's kind of unbelievable that this is in the Dollar Tree. I wonder if I need to read it again. So when I got home, I like consumed it. And, um, you know, I guess we have had to go through a lot as a family, uh, because of my husband's accident and I just have to embrace where my family is at right now. I mean, obviously it even kind of prompted me to remember to share this book with you guys because it's an incredible find at the Dollar Tree. Um, yeah, I don't know how much this book cost originally, but I thought it was an incredible find. It's kind of crazy that I have found do, uh, you know, Joyce Myers and Dr. Matt James in the same Dollar Tree. It's sort of like crazy. Uh, that's kind of associated with the Ho Oponopono is, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And people have necklaces of it in Hawaii that are really into the practice. And I find it really interesting because it's not necessarily like some kind of doormat practice of releasing. The, it's, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you, but that could all be directed to yourself or just because you're forgiving someone else doesn't mean that you have to continue in that process of a cycle that's not good for you. It just clears away what's going on inside of you. So I find that I want to start getting more into it again because it's really good and helpful to help other people um, without even explaining the whole Ho'oponopono, the concept of forgiveness to people who have trespassed against you in terrible ways is not necessarily for them. It's for you. And for what I deal with in my line of work and charity, it's important to be able to help people find a place where they can be well spiritually. Um, and I don't necessarily mean like a higher power. I mean like 
spiritually within themselves because having been abused leaves people mentally deranged sometimes and very mentally ill and they need to find things that will help them recenter regroup and you know help themselves to to live a better life and i just always find things like this feed my soul so that i can help others anyway i've taken up too much of the time already trying to explain all of that it's a very interesting book i'm so glad i found it again thank you dollar tree thank you Rhonda. and i'm gonna move on to the next book the next book is called souvenir nation i love this book it is relics keepsakes and curios from the smithsonian's national museum of, of american history and it has like a bunch of really cute stuff in it and it reminds me of this place i think it was called nebraska world nebraska world i don't i gotta google it it was like the craziest awesomest place ever that we, when uh i drove cross country country with one of my girlfriends when i was younger we stopped off and we we did like lots of those weird you know visit the biggest ball of twine and all these crazy things. And as we were doing that, we went to this place where it was a museum of the largest collections of everything. Like this dude had a whole entire huge barn. And when I say barn, it was like the size of like a movie theater with many levels full of antique cars. And like, then he had a whole barn full of antique thimbles and a pen collection. And like since the dawn of time, pens, calligraphy, just all kinds of things. It was the coolest place. So here it says, um, lock of Sir Walter Scott's hair in a glass vial. This lock of hair was cut from the gray head of the Scottish poet and historical novelist, Sir Walter Scott. The lock was cut by Scott's daughter Anne during his last illness um, in his home in the Scottish Highlands. But it's just so interesting to see what's in the smithsonian and there is the dude's hair there it is um sir walter sent this book to my brother wow a concrete fragment of the berlin wall a lot of people have pieces of the berlin wall or so they think but the one in the smithsonian that one's real i can tell you that uh vase cool stuff mexican american war spoils oh my god gorgeous look at those needle points like handkerchiefs just really cute i love looking at little things like this and we'll probably i know my son will probably read this book from cover to cover and then so like it's crazy things like this that i find so interesting laura Keene's bloodstains cuff worn at ford's theater now ford's theater was where president lincoln was shot and she was one of the actresses on the stage and she was asked to get the president of glass of water, uh, the president of glass of water. And there's like president Lincoln's blood, literally his DNA is in there. So that's in the Smithsonian, a cuff from this actress's that's like crazy interesting on some weird level, just all these. And I love, cause I guess I like to look at stuff like this because I love vintage stuff and I love things that have, um, they're valid. These have all been validated. They have the, these are all legitimate artifacts. They're artifacts. So they're sort of like historical artifacts. I think that that is a really crazy, interesting little book. I'm sure that my son will look through it. I'm definitely going to look through it. My son is 100% going to find a lot of intriguing interest in all of those little things because he too is like a tinkerer. He likes to have these little treasures and turn them into other things so he'll find it to be really interesting and then we're going to send it to my brother who is the ultimate like he is like a historian the historian of even my family so I had it as soon as I saw that book and I had it in my hand I was like this is going to my brother and I'm going to send it to him for sure the further the further adventures of Sherlock Holmes the, and the seventh bullet and um my son loves Sherlock Holmes we've watched like every type of Sherlock Holmes series movie everything so he'll totally read this it says conspiracy to murder sherlock holmes and dr watson traveled to new york city to investigate the assassination of true life muckraker and author david graham phillips they soon find themselves caught up in a web of deceit 
violence, and political intrigue, which only the great Sherlock Holmes can unravel. Artfully blending le legend history and spirited invention, Victor's debut reveals a welcome discovery of yet another lost Holmes case. So um, Daniel D. Victor is a high school teacher in Los Angeles, California. The seventh bullet is his first novel. So this is his first novel. Perhaps he's written many. I would love to find a new series of books that my son could get into while in quarantine. I definitely think that um, there, there's a picture of the Capitol. I definitely think that my son is going to find this really interesting, especially with everything that went on in the world recently. If it has anything to do with the Capitol and stuff like that, he'll probably find it even more interesting. I think I saw a diagram like this book. He loves stuff like that. So moving on, one of the next items that I hold, and I, th I think it's fabulous for Father's Day, is this Barbecue Boss, My Grill, My Rules picture frame. It's like a shadow box, so there's no glass, which is good because everything I hold with glass always ends up breaking. You just clip the picture in there, and because it's, it's actually plastic, you could literally put this outside. You could take a picture, put it in there and put it outside. What's what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? The picture's gonna get ruined, but you could put it like in your porch or if you have like a barbecue porch summer lanai area and you know, it's only a dollar. It's kind of cute to like put it out there by the grill or maybe like, you know, laminate the photo and put it in here and then it won't, nothing will happen to it because this is plastic. The back is plastic. So everything is plastic. It's a cute thing to just put out there for the dads and their barbecue domain. And yeah, maybe like a picture of them in the pool or at the grill, laminate it, stick it in there, give it to them for Father's Day and let them have it by the grill in your picnic area. It's like a super cute, simple, easy dollar father. I, I think it's really adorable. I only found one. I hope to find more of these because they make really cute Father's Day gifts. So I guess the next stuff I'll share with you guys is some home decor stuff. And I did share them in a walkthrough. I think they're really interesting. I don't even know exactly how I feel about them, but I know I love this one. It says, wake up and smell the coffee. Now, you see it's like a shadow box. So you could literally paint this and leave that. I'm thinking of painting this teal because the cup itself has a lot of blues in it and oranges. And I don't like the color. I don't like this color in my place. So I'm thinking of painting it and putting a different saying on it. But I love I love this vintage looking diner, diner wear looking co uh, coffee cup that's in here. And I, I like it and I, I, I like it, but I'm gonna change it and then I'm gonna love it. And I don't usually do that, but I really love the vintage cup and saucer and I just could see it being different. And so that's what's gonna be happening with that one. And then, in a crazy weird way, that's what I bought this one for too. Like, I love the heart. I don't love that it's like red wine kind of stained or, you know, I don't know what that's about. It seems like you should be putting your empty wine corks in here when you're done drinking wine. You could throw your corks in here. But again, I feel like the love lives here is cool. I think it would be really cool to put like, take the back off put like pieces of different fabric across the whole thing. And then when you put it back on, it'll just be a heart that looks like patchwork. So I might do that with this. That's why I had to buy it because I feel like, I feel like they have a lot of potential, but they're not where I want them to be. And the last one says, welcome to our home. Again, it's like a shadow box. It has, has this plastic over it, but it doesn't have any glass. And it has a bird and a birdhouse. And I feel like it needs a bird. It needs a cute bird kind of perched on it. I don't know. That's what I think. But I think that these will make really cute, like, gifts when people move into their homes. Like, I like the Welcome to Our Home specifically for that reason is what I bought it for. I bought a few of these because I just feel like when I meet the right kind of person that's moving into their home. This is like a really inexpensive $1 gift that you can always give them with the rest of the stuff that they get. I'll always be able to give that away to someone that just got an apartment or something like that. It's small and they'll appreciate it. They don't have anything. 
eventually they'll get their own designs and styles, but I just think that things like this are always good to have on hand. So I got three of those. And these I got in the candle, obviously the glass candle, candle section, but I like, love them. I love them. They can fit a tea light. You could put your electric or battery operated tea lights in here um, or real candles in here. You could burn, you know, that size or even a little bigger, the little chubby medium size candles you could burn anything really in there. The little round ones, those little round candles fit in here. But the really awesome thing that they have is they have this metal, this metal red colored metal, which makes them really nice and it fits a taper candle so they're lovely and I actually found red taper candles at the Dollar Tree not something you've come across all the time even at Christmas I didn't see them I don't know why but taper candles are harder and harder to come by lately they don't have a scent but they also don't have a bad scent either I hate it when candles have that crazy chemical <laughs> you guys know me and my crazy chemical smell but I don't like candles like that. And what are these made of? It's Sometimes I think they might be made of soy, but I don't know. They don't have any scent to them at all. I love that. And I just think that that is really, really lovely. For Valentine's dinner with the boys, I'm going to use these. I love them. So cute. Very classic and simple and just really nice for $3. Don't you guys think that those are really cute and nice? For now, they'll go on the mantle. So I think that those are the only like houseware, houseware things that I bought. Although I have a lot of things here that I consider housewares and some of them are baskets. I bought four of these and they're already being used. They are not they're actually not two for a dollar which is shocking because this size is two for a dollar and they come in a lot of like cute colors they also come in like white and pastel pink that's not really my thing but the blue ones are a really useful size this is like here's my head this is the size i always do that because you kind of get the idea even though i have kind of a big head but um like that's my hand see they're not huge they're like really a pencil cup size there are Two of them currently in my bathroom and I have one that I put all of my measuring spoons because measuring spoons are like something that you really need to not lose track of and I put them in the drawer that I keep like kitchen towels and stuff in so I can always find them when I actually want them. So I thought that was pretty useful and then I'm going to put one in my son's room for some of his art pencils and stuff like that because he has a lot of art pencils and gel pens and sharpies and he always needs more and more things like this but at a dollar it's a great deal they're really useful they're most useful in my medicine cabinet they help they hold all of my makeup brushes lip pencils eye pencils i love that it's a great size and it's plastic it's not going to break and then at two for a dollar this is a really good size and i'll tell you exactly what i bought them for because I really just needed one and I would have paid a dollar for one. It's the perfect size for these. Like I have a lot of stuff like this. Um, seasoning mix for the slow cooker or chili seasoning. I have a lot of ranch, you know, packages that the Aldi's, Aldi sells packages like this for ranch dressing, but I like to always use that when I'm making chicken, like chicken stir fry or whatever. You can season your chicken with it. It's like the yummiest marinade for chicken. But I have a lot like soup mixes, French onion, brown gravy. I have them all kind of separated and it's the perfect size bin to put them in and then put them that the, they won't fall out of the cabinet. I just absolutely love them for that. And since I do have two, I'm probably going to make I'm probably going to make one bin entirely for like seasonings and slow cooker and the other one for like French onion and vegetable soup mix because we actually have a lot of that because the boys love dip. So yeah, this is great for that. And I was really kind of psyched to get 
one that's the absolute right size. When I saw it, I was like, oh, and then I ran over and I, um, I didn't use this, but I, they, they always have like taco seasoning and I tested it out and I was like, yes, this one I actually got at Walmart. It's actually really good. Don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but give it a shot. If you're ever in Walmart, the Chipotle chicken, it's delicious seasoning. Absolutely love it. I think I'm going to work my way through the pile in front of me and the next pile of area, the next area kind of encompasses health and beauty aids and the beauty aisle kind of stuff. So we'll do that sort of next, even though it's not totally separated, but I do have a pile of things in front of me that are from that section. So I did pick up these and drop them all on the floor. And for those of you that don't know what those are, they are the latest Bolero body wipes. They're alcohol free. They are Bolero's latest body wipes. They're alcohol free. These are not face wipes, but honestly, your face is part of your body. They are, uh, for people who have sensitive skin, it may not be the greatest thing to use them on your face, but they are alcohol free and they do have essential oil to them. They're they contain a blend of essential oil, but there's still essential oils in there. They smell marvelous. That I will tell you. They really do smell marvelous. So, you know, if you're taking a road trip or something and you need to freshen up, definitely bring these with you. I actually already opened this one. It smells amazing. They, um, they actually expire uh, October of 2022. So that's interesting. I don't, you don't always see expiration dates on wipes. The eucalyptus and cedar smells delightful. I should have bought a ton of these. And um, there's 30 in a pack. And on the back, it does actually say uh, eucalyptus oil, cedar deodora, cedar seed oil. So cedar bark extract. They do actually have some good stuff in them. There's a lot of other things in here that I'm sure aren't good, but I do think that they're pretty good for a dollar. I like to buy wipes of all kinds. It's always nice to have them, especially in the summer when you go to the beach or um, you get hot, you want to wipe yourself, wipe your hands, whatever, even wipe your armpits so you don't smell. Whatever you're going to do with them, do it, but it's good to have them on hand. And then there's lemongrass and ginger, and I have a funny feeling I'm going to love these two. Let's give them a whiff. Okay, they smell amazing. They literally smell amazing. Yeah, I could see on a hot day just wanting to like refresh with this. They're awesome. Lemongrass and ginger. Yup, yes. Oh boy, I think I'm going to love them all. I'm sorry I didn't get more. Tangerine and lavender. I know already. Mmm. They smell good, but they don't smell as good as the other two. Also made with an essential oil blend. I'm going to assume that they all have essential oils in them. These are grapefruit and lime. Again, they're going to, I'm going to, I love anything grapefruit scented or citrus scented. I just love that. Wow. These really smell like grapefruit. These are wonderful, wonderful. These are wonderful scented. Citrus sea salt. Oh my God, more citrus. These were like made for the summer. Totally made for the summer. Ooh. This smells like oranges and coconut oil. It doesn't smell like salt. It says sea salt. So basically this smells like tanning lotion. Like a pina colada. It is delicious anyway. Love it. Uh-oh, lemon, verbena, and sage. I, you guys, I couldn't not buy every one of them because I was like, why did I buy so many of them? And now that I'm rereading the names and smelling them, I could, I would never be able to choose. Oh, wow. Lemon, verbena, and sage smells incredible as well. These are all delightful. I'm so glad I got each and every one of them. Each and every one of these wipes is going to get used. They're wonderful. They're good to give. They're just good to have in the car. If you're going to have a lunch in the car, if you want to freshen up, if you feel like you might be sweaty in the summer, I just, I think that there's even more, honestly. I could have sworn there were eight, but I have six here. There are more. Cucumber and fresh mint. What's this going to be? 
Hmm, I'm going to love this too because it has mint. Not so much the cucumber, but yep, the mint. Ugh, and you really smell it. They smell amazing. You guys do not pass these up. $30 for a dollar is a good deal. They're like $2.99, $3.99 at Marshall's and they're, they're like the same kind of thing. These are really wonderful. And they have the door. That's the other thing. Don't forget about that. This keeps them fresh after you open them. I love that. I'm very content with these. I really needed more wipes and now I have them. It's a rainbow of Bolero products. I love them and I'm so excited that I have them. I really am. And I was saying that I needed more wipes and I just didn't know what was coming down the pike. Thank you, Dollar Tree. Another item that I picked up three of these um, to gift and to also use for myself. It's by Sunday Rain and it says exfoliating soap bar, coffee and vanilla with coffee and vanilla extract. And it does have, you can see, it's like one of those, it's like you could see it's a glycerin type soap, but it has actual like ground coffee in it to exfoliate. You could almost see through it. I wish I could really get it to convey. I don't know if you guys can see, but it, it smells like vanilla. It looks really exciting. And uh, yeah, I picked up three. I think it's a nice little gift. They weren't cheap. I checked online. I think they're originally $8. So that's something nice to try. And also by Sunday Rain. In part one, I shared lots of masks that I found by K-Beauty. And something else by Sunday Rain. I can't remember. Oh, it might have not even been in the last haul. It might have been in the haul before that. But regardless, oh, Max is having a nightmare. Maxie, Maxie, it's okay. Okay, you're okay, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> Was having a nightmare. So um, these, I bought a few of these as well, also to gift. Sunday Rain Gel Body Lotion. Now I did test one. Um, they do come sealed, so you know, pay attention to the one that that one is not the one i did test one of them just because it says gel and i was kind of curious to see if it was gross because this year the eucalyptus april bath and shower gel um soap that the dollar tree made i don't like it it has like that gel consistency the lotion i'm okay with but i do not like the consistency of the soap at all and last year it was different now, this is a gel lotion, which is kind of like if you guys have ever used like a Vaseline when they thicken it up and turn it into like a lotion. Well, I don't know what that's called, but it's like a lotion of Vaseline. Um, it has the same sort of consistency. See, it's like kind of translucent. I don't know. The scent is delicious. It's really minty. It tastes like a summer drink, like a watermelon juice and mint, like a tropical island drink. I don't know how I feel about this consistency. It's almost like, it's nice. Actually, it's a nice lotion. It's, it's not like something I would put on my face. Nope. But definitely it's a body lotion and I would probably use it on your feet because it's definitely very, it really penetrates. And it has a heavy, like, it's non-greasy. I don't know. I'll definitely put it on my feet because I like the mintiness of it. And for a dollar, I thought it was a nice thing to gift. It also looks really pretty with the sponges, the love sponges that they sell at the Dollar Tree. And I think it looks really pretty. They have this box. They also have a mermaid version, which I'll be sharing in a moment. But I like to make little tiny moments of happiness for people and gift to people and this is like one of them i can gift this to a friend or you know for three dollars i could give it away for mother's day um however i decide to put it i can't do it because in the camera it looks opposite but however i choose to put it in there i just think that the colors look nice together i was kind of hoping to get the butterfly to show but when I put like a little bit of tissue paper on the bottom or whatever, I'll get the butterfly to show and maybe add like one other thing, like maybe a lip gloss 
or something, but for under $5, it's cute. I think it's very cute. Oops. Or maybe a soap. Put it, Maybe I'll put a soap on the bottom, like just a bar of soap to get them to all come up just a little bit and then put a lip gloss because then the sponge makes sense. But I just like this. I love this sponge. I think it's really cute. I like how the butterfly matches this lotion. And I just think that this will be useful to someone for something. Whereas, you know, it's a cute little home decor piece, but that also could be used for other things. They can throw their makeup sponges in it or throw their kids crayons in it, but whatever, they will find a use for it. And it's not just something that's gonna go in the garbage like a gift bag. I hate wasting my money on gift bags. I know that that's terrible. People love their gift bags from the Dollar Tree, but I only buy gift bags when I have to. If I can spend a dollar and get something tangible like this, I would rather get this. And it's always my kind of way of gifting. So yeah, I love it, just love it. I did also pick up quite a few of these Namaste in bed masks because I think they're super cute and it's hard to sleep in shelters and places like that. I thought it would be like a nice little thoughtful gift. I'm not sure who I'm giving these to. I did get a few of the like four, I don't know, but I can get more. I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with them, whether I was going to give them personally or I'm probably going to send them out to people that I'm trying to reconnect with just to check on them and see how they're doing. I think that's like cute and put a few other things in it. Um, I did also pick up the purple versions and as I'm picking them up right now, I'm getting a premonition. No, I'm joking. I'm realizing what else you could do with these, which is kind of awesome. I recently saw, I'm subscribed to Bonnie from Bon Bon's Hauls. I love her channel actually. And she had on her community page done one with one of those Dollar Tree gray mats that you put it, the industrial version. She, I don't think she did a DIY. She just showed it on her community page because I don't remember seeing anything uploaded about how to do it. But I was thinking how you could dip this into paint and use it as a stamper and just stamp a heart. And then you do the same thing with the love and stamp the word love yeah i wonder if that's what she did i'd have to look at it again i don't maybe that is what she did i'm gonna have to ask her if these are what she used because now i'm like duh obviously you could do that she already did it then she might think i'm like you know being ridiculous right now but i just remember seeing it in my mind's eye and i was like ooh, but i don't even i don't know does anybody know what i'm talking about did you guys see that community page post where she showed the really cute, it had like four hearts and four hearts and the word love. Well, how else would she have written the word love? I don't know, guys. I don't, I'm rambling. But anyway, if that's how she did it, then I'm like Sherlock Holmes, which is a throwback to the previous segment of my son's book. So either way, whatever, those are good for that. Maybe I, I didn't think of it. She already did. So I don't know. I don't know. But I might do it. Like I don't have enough to do. I don't know. I don't want to waste the sponges. I kind of would rather send them out. To people but maybe I will waste a couple I did buy a bunch of them like five or six of each I have quite a few and uh, more health and beauty aids I did score about 12 of these true match mineral by they are a brand name by L'Oreal true match mineral very dark but perfect for the people that I serve there are lots of women of color in the population that I serve. And this is a really good product. It is a mineral-based uh, makeup, gentle makeup. And the name of this one, I think there's a couple, but they're all fairly dark-skinned. C7 Nut Brown. It's very beautiful, really lovely quality makeup. And like I said, I got about a dozen of these. And I'm sure the people that get them will really like it. It's very good makeup. I've actually had my... I've tried this for my skin tone and it's really nice stuff. I forgot to show you guys the other one of this. So I did show you guys the love one with the butterfly and you could put a plant in it. You could do a million things with it. But I bought these two. I bought these two styles, but I bought quite a few of each one. This I'm going to make some Mother's Day, maybe Valentine's. I'm thinking Mother's Day could be that I don't know maybe even now I'll send them out spring love could be for anything I love it and I bought it for just 
reconnecting with people. But then these mermaid off-duty boxes, first of all, they are adorable. And yeah, you could put a plant in there, but I love the idea of putting summer stuff like sunblock, pair of shades. Dollar Tree is coming up with their sunglasses very soon, if not already, pair of sunglasses. And what else? Aloe vera gel, they have that at the Dollar Tree. And if people come over for pool, like a pool day, I can gift this. I love doing things like that. I love having pool parties. Now, I'm hoping that by summer, I will have a vaccine and I will be able to like coexist with other people again. This is what I'm hoping for because I live for the summer. If I have to spend another summer in quarantine, I'm not gonna make it. But maybe I'll move by then, I don't know. But the bottom line is that these are super adorable for pool party gifts. And that is exactly what I'm going to do with them. I just love it. Even if you put a bottle of water in here, like a bottle of water right here and a sunblock and a pair of shades. What a cute gift to give your guests. Put it in a plastic cellophane and just keep it at your house for when people come over for the pool. It's like adorable. I love, I love having little things for people to take home with. It makes me crazy happy. Those are the moments that bring me joy. I love sharing things with my friends and creatively cute, inexpensive little things. Like I bought a ton of these um, Care On Sport sunscreens at five and below. They're not expired, but I bought them at like 75% off. They were like a buck and a quarter. This is really good stuff. It's face sunblock and people forget to use face sunblock and I always have to remember because I very easily get um, sunspots. So I love it. I love it. Love that. And I, that was a score. I have a bunch of them and I love to share with people. The next items that I found are some makeup items. I did get this and I think it's amazing. It's the Wet n Wild Come Correct Celebrity Concealer. Uh, I saw Thrifty Tiffany haul this a while ago, and I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to find it. But I did, and I was so happy. It's very tiny if my memory serves me. If my memory serves me well, it's very tiny, and the box just is deceiving. Yes. Yep, this is the one. It is really the perfect color for me. And this tube... It's so little. Very small. I'm sure it goes a long way. It's very light. This is a very light color. No, it's even, it's too light for even me. This color is. Celebrity Concealer, Fair, the name of this color is A114 Fair Claire. It is very, very light. It's lighter than even my skin tone. And my skin looks terrible today. Ever since my allergic reaction, my skin has been very splotchy, but it will pass. Um, this is probably too light for me. I'll have to pass this on. This is definitely too light for me. I would need the medium. I'm noticing that in the wet and wild, I actually need a medium. The fair is like the fairest of them all. And that's not me in, in the wet and wild products. So this is like almost white, 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 like porcelain white, fair skin colored. But still, I'll come across the right person to gift it to. It was only a dollar, and still it's a great deal. I'm sure that it's a lot more money in the store. I, I wanted to try it. Has a nice consistency. And then I found this Hard Candy 12-hour smudge-proof felt-tip eyeliner. That was a lot to say, right? So Hard Candy 12-hour smudge-proof felt-tip eyeliner. Ha, huh, did it. Um, it is... I have this also in gray and I like it. So I'm kind of happy that I found it in brown. Sometimes it's nice to do brown when you're doing different type of um, eyeshadows or whatever. Oh, and it writes really well. Yeah, that's really cute. I put on way too much eyeliner today. 
because I used the gel one. That's what happens. I told you guys it would happen. when I. These are the best kind. This works best for me because I don't go overboard. I just do one line and it's nice and thin and perfect. And for a dollar, I love it. It was only a dollar and it's the kind that I like. I didn't see it in black, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. And I, you guys know that I love the name of makeup. This one is number 894 Oh Fudge. 894 Oh Fudge. Hilarious. 894 Oh Fudge. I don't know if you can actually see that, but it's really cute. Very happy to find that. I'm going to use that with happiness. So then, now this is how you know I am a true glutton for punishment, guys. You know that I had like a crazy allergic reaction to the Broadway Colors makeup, um, the palette, right? Then I saw Erica Fuller haul. I had seen these already and I had shown them in a walkthrough and I was like, I'm not going to buy them. Then when I went to the Dollar Tree again, I was like... I saw Erica Fuller put it on in her car. And for those of you that don't watch her channel, she does great stuff. Like she tried the makeup on right in the car and was like, I don't know, maybe because of my lip gloss, it's not drying. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing this color right here, right now. It's very true to the color on the package. But when she tried it on, she said that it didn't have an odor. She would say if it had an odor. So that automatically, I was like, you know what? Maybe it was just the palettes. Maybe it was just the actual skin makeup. If the lipstick doesn't have it, I'd like to check it out. I like matte lipsticks. And I definitely like to try new colors. And I also know that. Now, here's the reason why I really did it. Um, I like this color to accentuate Easter eggs. Now, I'm wearing it right now. And I'll be totally honest. This is not a color that I would instinctively want to use I was happening to wear this and it's got like a lot of coral and peach sort of colors to it so I was like ah I'll, I'll wear this lipstick today but when I decorate my eggs after I paint them if I want to like paint a zigzag or something in them you can use a matte lipstick like a lip gloss type of but a matte one it dries on the egg on the outer shell of the egg and it dries really nicely. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. I do these crazy things with makeup because I like to use my things and not buy things for no reason. But usually the lipstick colors are fun to put on eggs because they have those pastelish colors. And it's usually for me, colors that I don't like that turn out to be perfect for Easter decorating of eggs. So wherever you put the lipstick color, the egg dye won't paint over it. So you can kind of do it first and then dip them into a color. Like you could put this on it and then dip it onto purple and the purple will paint everywhere but where you've put this. It works out really well. So I kind of figured I could try them out, see what kind of matteness they have. They are very matte. See that? It's like really dry. And um, this color number five, top select, top selection, it's not a preferred color. If I was dying in need of a lipstick, I would definitely use it, but I prefer other colors. And then I did buy this. Honestly, this color, I would never wear it. <laughs> like, unless I was going to an 80s Halloween party and I was doing like, I don't know, some 80s thing. But this is perfect for egg, egg decorating <laughs> lip gloss right here, matte lip sort of thing maybe i'll gift it if somebody's interested but more than likely that's what i bought it for and then i wanted to show you guys that there are two dark ones and they look very similar to each other but they're not i'm probably going to gift this one it's not really for easter for me but i just wanted to show you guys that there's two colors one of them is called juliet this color is beautiful I'll wear it in my next video. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is a burgundy. It's like the color of my hair. The color is, it's, ah, I love this color. Gorgeous. And then this one is very, very dark. Like I said, I will probably gift it to someone that wears practically black lipstick. It's called Woodbury. But I wanted to show you that there are two different ones, super duper similar. 
and they are not the same, so pay close attention. And if you look on the very bottom, you can see the names of them through the packaging if you really look hard. So the gorgeous burgundy one is number 60, and the really darker one is number one, which if you're looking for a super dark brown, like coffee colored lipstick, this is probably the color that you would love. And I've been wearing it for two days. I tested, I, well, I, I wore the burgundy one yesterday that I like. I put this one on just to share with you guys about the egg thing. And um, no problem, no skin irritation, no weird odor. Neither one of them have an odor. So I think it was just the palettes and that primer that were just gross, grody, gross. So I do like to keep an open mind. And for a dollar, I'll always try things out at the Dollar Tree because if I love something and I can use it in abundance, I will always buy a lot of it and gift it like you guys know. So it's worth the dollar to test it out. I did pick up these clips. They're super cute. I love, love, love them because, and I think that this is so worthwhile to mention, the actual clip, the alligator clip is black. So it kind of blends really cute into hair differently than other clips would and it has this like leather bow so cute really a cute cute clip and it comes two for a dollar black and purple i love it they had i think like hot pink and some other color but i didn't pick them up i think it was yellow i don't know why i didn't pick them up but i just picked up these oh no no i'm totally crazy those are dream colors i would have picked those up it was like tan and brown colors I don't want like tan and brown I think but purple goes cute with my hair actually and black goes cute with everything like who doesn't want a black little bow clip seriously but the fact that it is a black alligator clip is super exciting I think I think that it's different you don't always see that and it blends if you have like black hair it's not gonna um show or be silver or gold or anything like it it's very matte and sleek and because it's a matte alligator clip you can um upcycle it if you want but it, it has like a much higher end look and feel to it really it just i don't know i feel like it has a much high end look to it with the black the black and it's matte it's just sometimes black matte is very high end looking it could be the cheapest thing and it makes it look very luxurious by having no pizzazz at all. It's kind of the weirdest thing. But I really like these a lot. I will definitely use them when my hair is clean. My hair is kind of like, eh, today. This is a eh kind of day. Like I said, we're having a blizzard. Couple more health and beauty aid related items that I found. Um, I did pick up another one of these. I do actually love them. It is a wonder and amazes me how these microfiber towels do not dry anything in the kitchen, don't work at all in the kitchen, and yet they dry our hair, but they they work really well. Does anybody else have them and understand what I'm talking about? I love this color. I have like a, a more blue teal one, but this color that I saw the other day was a different color and I had to have it. I love it, love, love, love it. And I'm sure you guys have seen these a million times. You put your head, you know, you, you put your hair after you wash it in here and then you wrap it up and you like do this whole thing where you tie it up and somehow your hair gets dry, like practically towel dried in there. After I did that whole, now I look like an even crazier crazy lady, but um, how does that work that this dries things and yet the ones that they make for the kitchen don't? It's made out of the same icky microfiber material i literally hate this material but these towels work great is it just because it's so closely like smushed to my head because the regular towel doesn't really do it that well anyhow they make good gifts they get make good fillers and gift baskets and they it says to twist your hair securely so honestly it's it's great and also if you're doing a conditioning treatment this is really good for that too you can put your hair in there with the conditioning treatment, close it up, walk around the house the whole day, just condition the heck out of your hair. Or if you're gonna have a pool day and you don't wanna wet your hair, put conditioner in your hair, go out in your backyard, 
wear this in your hair the whole day. If no one's going to see you, who cares? And even if they are going to see you, still who cares? Do a conditioning treatment. And then when it's time to go and wash your hair, you've conditioned your hair the entire day in the sun. Those are like some of my favorite things to do when I'm just... When I'm just lounging around and looking, I cannot wait for summer. I'm so depressed that there's a blizzard going on that I'm just going to keep talking about summer, summer things. I'm making, I'm going to make summer baskets. I'm going to plan my summer hair treatments. I am just looking forward to the sunny, summery days of sunshine and fun in the sun. That's it. I hate winter so much, you guys. I just want to be in Florida, a Floridian already. I need the sunshine and palm trees of Florida. Do you guys remember that commercial when you need it bad we've got it good come to florida i've been singing it to myself i texted it to my friend gretchen today i just need to get the hell out of winter so now that i've like serenaded you guys i'm gonna move forward <laughs> enough with the towel my microfiber towel um i do have a few more valentine items not a lot but just a few and i gotta get them into the mail before it's past valentine's i might not even make it at this point but i probably will send them priority I, I did get these tea towels. You are awesome. I know I had them way before Valentine's, but because I have been sitting on this haul for another five days, I ruined it for everyone. And will you be my Nomi? Love this. I got a few of these. They're going out in the mail. And honestly, I think this one is gorgeous. It doesn't even need to be just for Valentine's. Like, why does this only have to be for Valentine? They're Valentine shaped balloons on a beautiful bicycle with roses. It is exquisite adorable and I outstandingly love it I just love these kind of towels that when the Dollar Tree makes these I'm in love with these I love them they don't feel uchy and I did get like a bunch of all of them as gifts I have a stack of these so I got to get them in the mail pronto but this is for the pet lovers there's something from ev for everyone the gnome lovers and the teal lovers I just love these love 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 them I did pick up another one of these because a friend asked me for it. So this is the ribbon. I hold it a while ago that says you're my person. I was shocked that I found it. So I picked up another one. And I think that is all of the Valentine items that I have. And now we're going to move into some seriously unbelievable spring stuff, guys. Unbelievable. I couldn't forgot. Before I move into the spring... I showed it, but I didn't de describe it. And I don't know if anyone else has hold this, but it's kind of amazing. I picked up a couple of these. It says exfoliating washcloth, but now it's by Spa, um, Spa April Bath and Shower. And I don't usually love their things. I do buy the towel for my hair from time to time when, I, when they get a color that I like. I don't love all of the stuff that comes from them, but this washcloth is so interesting. I already have one in use and I picked up another one because it's humongous and it is really exfoliating. Like you can just use it on your back. Do you guys like see that is like really amazing. You can really like use it in the shower to like exfoliate your legs, exfoliate. Like you could just exfoliate your arms and get a workout all at the same time but it is very cool fabric and because of the length of it you could really exfoliate parts of you that maybe you normally wouldn't because you could put a lot of pressure I don't know but I find it to be really cool you could use this like in a hot tub or a steam room or something like that you could probably even use it on your face I have never done it it might be too rough for your face but it's really an incredible kind of textured plastic sort of hybrid fabric. I don't know what in the world it is, but it's it's marvelous. I love it. And if you don't like it for that, you can put it in some kind of a Easter basket as like shred or whatever, and that'll work too. <laughs> It's the Easter. If you hate it in your shower, you can always upcycle it into some kind of seasonal decor. But I really think that you won't be disappointed. This this does very nice shower cleaning. I I was very happy with it. So I actually have two and I'm I'm really kind of psyched to have a backup cuz I think it's a really good product. I've never really seen anything shaped like that for the shower. Have you guys ever seen It's almost like a towel, like an exfoliating towel. It's so weird but kind of brilliant. You it really makes you be able to 
reach hard to reach spots and put a lot of pressure on them by like using your own strength. Very cool product. Without any more ado, as promised, spring, spring, spring has sprung. And boy, oh boy, did I get the best of the spring. And there's still a couple of things I'm hunting for, but only because I accidentally passed them up. When I did my walkthrough, there was so much Easter stuff out. Now, these foam eggs are amazing. You get 12 per package. And of course, people use them in their little Easter trees or you know, whatever. The Dollar Tree does have that one tinsel tree, which is the same as the Christmas tree, just repackaged, just in case you guys were wondering. I keep moving the camera. Sorry about that. But they do have a couple of different styles of these eggs that hang from your little Easter trees. And you do get 12, like I said. But what I like to do is, and they also offer the Easter picks where I think you get six, but I actually like to get a whole bunch of these packages. And I pull the... I'll just show you. I pull the little ribbon out on the ones that I want to make into floral picks. Well, this one already has it out. So however that happens. See, like this one already is missing its ribbon. And I take the barbecue steaks from the Dollar Tree and I just stab them in. And I cut them to whatever height I want them to be in. And I just use these to do my floral display picks because I love this size. I, I guess maybe I pick flowers that are more delicate for the spring. I don't know what it is, but I really like using these this size. And you can embellish them with your own ribbon. You could do whatever you want, but you get a lot more for a dollar out of these. And I always have tons of shish kebab sticks at my house from the Dollar Tree because I obviously shish kebab and barbecue plenty in the summer so I always have a lot and they're always on hand and you can make 12 of these and add them into a bouquet and you have a very fun Easter bouquet you can um, you know put them in by color order so that it kind of looks like ombre effect or rainbow effect they're just so cute I love these they're so versatile and I love the striped ones and, and they're glittery and they're just, they're wonderful. You can fill vases with them. Just so many things you could do with these. Do not pass these up. You will regret it later. The glittery Easter eggs. I love these as well. And again, now these are supposed to be for Easter egg hunts and stuff like that. And you get 10 for a dollar. But now you get 10 for a dollar of these as opposed to the six that you get in the past six or seven I think it's six but they have holes in them and you can literally put the barbecue stick right in this I mean I'm not even going to open it it's going to make too much noise but there's a hole in the bottom of the egg there it is it's skewered you could do whatever you want with it when it's properly sealed because some of them are not sealed See, it makes a lot of noise and the glitter is going to go everywhere and it's going to make my face itchy. So I'm not opening it until I have to. But you see, you just skewer them. You could use them for anything you want. And you get 10 for a dollar. And frankly, I like these better than the foam ones. These hold up very well in outdoor decor. So if you're going to do like a big planter display or something, use these. The rain doesn't ruin them. The sun doesn't ruin them as quickly as the foam. The ones that have the glitter on the glue, the glitter glue on the foam ones, they wash out really quickly. The plastic ones have so much glitter on them that they don't wash out as quickly and they will stay vibrant in your displays a lot longer. So that's my little trick. I don't know if you guys have figured that out yet already, but that works really good for me. Spring stuff for the wall decor and outdoor signs and indoor signs is just amazing. Look at this super glittery, which I don't mind, Easter buddy butt cutie patootie sign. I absolutely think it's beautiful. It has this faux barnwood whitewashed background and these four bunny butts with cottontails. This is so cute. I mean, this is really a very adorable sign. If you just get one sign and this is it, you'll still have like the whole spring fling and it doesn't say Easter. So it could just be a welcome door sign. And then look at these really beautiful. 
I don't know if I want to put them like on the edge of my lawn or take them off the sticks and make them into a garland. I don't know what is going to happen with these. And I almost wanted to get doubles of everything, but I didn't. I bought one of each and I literally think they're gorgeous. I could, I don't know. There's so many things you could do with these. They're really so cute. I know that people take them apart and paint them, but I just don't know why you would want to do anything to these other than what they have. Like this floral one is so cute with the little burlap. I just, I like them just as they are. This one is gorgeous with the swirled glittery uh, teal and yellow. And then this one with the stripes. And this one, this classic Easter, like classic Easter egg. So beautiful. They are really so, so adorable for the spring that, and they're a little heavy dutier than they were in years in the past. And you could just put them even in your planters or put two and two on either side of your walkway and then put your solar lights. There's just so many things that you could do with these. I don't know why people are painting them because they do have the plain ones at the Dollar Tree that are wood. So I just think that these are already so nicely done that you don't have to paint them. But I have seen people painting them and maybe they can't get the plain ones. I don't know, but I love the way they look. And I did pick up, I showed this in my walkthrough. I picked up this happy Easter sign that has more of these cutie patootie already done eggs. And it says happy Easter with a bunny. And I may take this apart and do something else with it. Like I did with my Valentine black and white. I'm sure you guys remember that the Dollar Tree had like the welcome sign that had a bunch of these. And I made a few of these actually with this black and white um, clipboard and I gave it to people because I just think it's so cute and so simple. I just cut out the heart. I put a little of the grow grain plaid ribbon to hold the heart, glued it into the spot, uh, double sided taped it actually. It's not even glued in. And voila, like Olivia says, I have this cute piece of decor that I can change into a shamrock later. I can change into an Easter egg if I want. I could do whatever I want with this, with this classic black and white background. And I just think it's so cute. You could change the ribbon out. You could do whatever you want, but how cute is the actual black and white frame and then seasonally changing it? And it just makes a really nice statement. I love it a totally easy DIY but I might probably well, I think that 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 might be what I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna pick whichever one I think looks the cutest in that frame and pull it out and then probably use the other ones I don't know honestly I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I thought I bought two different kind but maybe I bought only one but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I'm not sure but I did pick this up maybe I will just leave it as is who knows you never know with me but I do think that it is a really cute sign for a dollar and that there are really a lot of possibilities with it. You could put this in like a flower arrangement for a gift, put a stick on the bottom of this, a pop, you know, a popsicle stick or whatever on the bottom of that, put it in a floral arrangement to gift to your family member or friends. And then you have these Easter ones. You can make more picks out of these and put them in a floral arrangement. There's so many things you could do. These signs have so many possibilities because you get five different things for one dollar and they're really beautiful nice size things so i that i might have to frankenstein because i don't really i don't know i can't i can't commit to anything there are so many cool easter things here and i've seen even more coming down the pike but i do have so many of them now there were two different ones one that said um or welcome spring and this one says easter greetings so I did pick up the Easter greetings one. I'm probably going to put this in my barn wall or maybe here with an Easter. I do have like an Easter, but I have like a backdrop in every season because normally I do events and kids take pictures in front of these. But since I'm not doing events, I have them. And uh, yeah, so they came in really handy. And I'm probably going to maybe put this, I'm going to put my Easter backdrop on here and maybe hang this to decorate. So you guys, you guys will enjoy it for the Easter season, but I'm not committing to anything because my brain is swimming with so many ideas. They have so much cute stuff for, for the season and you haven't seen the best yet. I'm holding out. I'm holding out. Then I did get this banner that is a bunny rabbit banner, a bunny rabbit butt banner, 
just like the welcome thing. But I had to literally pull it out of Mabel's mouth because she was killing it. And uh, she was bunny hunting. <laughs> my my dogs are just, they're just a lot to deal with every day, guys. But so here is what it is. And it is so beautiful. They come in every color of the rainbow. I like, love this. Well, you get it. Aren't they so cute for, I mean, isn't that amazing for a dollar? That is like just a really great deal for a dollar. I squished them all together so you could see them better, but you would spread them out. I'm considering spreading them out and then putting an egg in between each of them. Because I feel like that would be even cuter, like an egg between them of the eggs from here, maybe. Which is why I thought I had two, but I only got one. I don't know. I don't know yet. Don't hold me to it. I, I may have thought of something different in the store and then forgot about it. It will come back to me. I thought I wasn't recording for Did you guys see that look of terror come over me? I thought I wasn't recording. I was like, oh, psh, that's it. Like, I thought I stopped recording hours ago. And meanwhile, I'm like practically done with this video. I'm starting to see the bottom of the table. Then I'm not going to show you those yet. And then I picked up these. This is a welcome sign. And it doesn't even have to be for Easter. This could be for summer. I'm going to actually save this for summer. I think it's super cute for summer when I bust out my um, sunflowers and daisies. And yeah, I love it. I love, 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 love this. It's for the summer, but I'm going to save it. And I picked it up now or you're not going to see it in the summer. And then check this out. This is gorgeous. Hello, spring. And there's another one with a red truck, but I don't love, I don't love it. I didn't, I can't remember exactly what it looks like. And my battery had died. I almost feel like bad that I didn't pick it up, but I'm sure you guys have seen everyone in the whole world haul it because everyone loves the truck. But I have to say that this is so pretty. It really is pretty. There's no way around it. Hello, spring. It has a lot going on and it has this 3D hello See that? It's like extra added in. It is just, this is simply gorgeous. Beautiful sign. Beautiful. But it gets better. There's more beautiful signs than that. These are probably the most gorgeous things that the Dollar Tree has ever made. They're more like Dollar General signs than they are Dollar Tree signs. And I can't wait to share them with you. Beautiful 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 watermelon 25 cents the red truck in its full-blown happy-go-lucky glory and then in pink fresh flowers gore just absolutely gorgeous i am in love i wish there was a yellow one too but this is my favorite my favorite i cannot stress my favorite enough Look at that color. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. It's, and it's strawberries. I love strawberries. I love this color. I, I'm probably going to keep this in my kitchen year round. I live like literally I'm in love with it. This is beautiful. I'm going to probably paint my pantry and put this on my pantry and leave it up forever. I love this sign that much. So I did get three of these signs because I'm going to gift one to a friend and keep one because I'm going to decorate with it, but one is going in my kitchen and I'm gifting one to a friend. They are marvelous. And I did pick up an extra pink one. I'm also going to gift that to a friend because the fresh flowers pink one is really incredibly gorgeous too. I mean, look at the detail in that. That is so nice. Isn't that beautiful? This is more like a dollar general sign. It has like a 3D effect. This is like the kind of sign that the dollar general would be selling for like two bucks. I mean, I know it sounds like stupid and so like minute of a difference money wise, but it's like a better quality. It's a little thicker. I don't know. It just feels better to me. I'm sure it won't last a season outside, but still, it's still a nicer. It's just all around nicer. I'm going to. So I'm coming to the close of part two because I think my phone is starting to get full. It's acting a little funny. But I want to share this with you. I did show it in my walkthrough and I did buy this version. There is like another few different, all of, it was very hard to choose, but I chose 
this one because I feel like it goes the best with the colors that I have in my bohemian sort of coffee bar area with my new Keurig that I got. And um, I just kind of love it. It's super bohemian and I have a really cute DIY that I want to share with you guys that I use this the love sign that the Dollar Tree has that gold wire love sign and one of those tassel banners that they were selling a while ago that I showed in my walkthrough. Um, I'm really, really excited about the DIY. Really simple, under $3, looks super high end. You could use it all year round. It would be like at least 25 bucks in anthropology easily. Anyway, I just love this yarn. I feel like there's a lot of possibilities for it. And there's this just cotton, premium cotton. Look at this color. Oh my goodness. You guys know that I'm obsessed with the whole lemons and lime thing. And I did get this uh, from the flag section, the fresh lemonade sign. And they have like so many different ones. I know there's like a gnome one. I didn't want any of those, but I will put some pictures up if I can get them or I'll share them in my next walkthrough. I don't think that I shared the pictures of this in my walkthrough. If you guys haven't seen them, there are a lot of really cute flags out right now at the Dollar Tree, but this fresh lemonade one, I was kind of excited to find because the lemon and lime thing that I wanna make with the eucalyptus, um, I hold the eucalyptus garland. I wanna glue lemons and limes into it. And I was thinking of using the calendar, but then I forgot that I bought this flag. I'm not sure, maybe I'll do two things. I don't know, but I definitely picked this up. I'm gonna be making some kind of tassels or pom-poms because just, it's so like, it's cotton, it's so nice. Maybe some sort of rudimentary macrame. I don't know, but I have kind of gotten into a little, this DIY with the Just Yarn with that metal wire love thing has kind of gotten me slightly into like, the baby step of macrame. It's just a simple that I remember doing when I was little to wire hangers to cover them. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but I had like a volunteer job as um, like a candy striper in a hospital in my neighborhood when I was really little. And they would make us take wire hangers or they didn't make us. It wasn't like we were in like, you know, some, we, we chose to, we were volunteers, but we used to take wire hangers and we used to cover them with yarn of all colors, like with a simple, like kind of knot thing. I, I feel like that must be macrame. I don't know, but it wasn't crocheting or anything like that. It's just sort of like a knotting technique. And then when the people would come in for procedures, they would get to hang their clothes on this like nice thing that was like donated to you by the candy stripers and people you, we would bring people hangers it was just a nice little cozy thing for them to hang their clothes on it didn't make the hospital stay any better but it was just something nice to give them that was made by the candy stripers the volunteers so yeah so i learned how to do that and that's one of the few things i learned how to do in that whole crochet world i don't know how to do anything but that that's it I, I have never been able to get off of that step and do anything further but who knows maybe i will maybe i will i did watch a couple of diys and like a couple of videos on not diys like actual tutorials on macrame it seems hard i'm not gonna lie i i just don't know how to follow it but I like macrame because I love bohemian things. Maybe that's not even in style anymore, but I don't care. I like it. So I, I'm going to do the DIY and I have this cotton and I'm going to explore. So you will see this again. Oh, yes, you shall. I'm, I'm loving the whole yellow theme for summer, but spring is upon us and there's a lot of possibilities for spring. And then I did share this in a walkthrough as well. These give it to God boxes. I think they're really beautiful. And the one that I chose, okay, so I, I didn't choose all of them, but the give it to God, this box with this print, super cute. Um, it says, I am the Lord who heals you. And I think that that's really good if you know someone that's sick or going to the hospital or is suffering in a medical way or in a mental way in a medically mental way. I think that's a really good thing to have on hand to give someone. God forbid, but I think it is. And then this one says, give it to God and it's peach on the inside. That one's pink. That one's pink on the back and it's that one. And then this one 
I think is my favorite print of all, actually. But this one says, be completely humble, gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. And it's not my favorite saying on the inside, but it also has my favorite paper to write in on the inside. So that's kind of like, I love everything about this one, but I wish that this one had what this one, which is my least kind of favorite print, but still very cute. I just like that print more. I think I like it because it has this kooky retro green and blue flower because the silliest things make me love them. But this kind of rainbowy looking one is really cute too. It looks like kids drew it. But this one says the best. This one says the absolute best thing. And that's the paper you get in there. And you do get a little pencil. It's a mechanical pencil with an eraser. I like that because, you know, when you're asking for something, you might want to change how you ask. So booked with strength and dignity, she laughs without fear of the future. It's from the Proverbs. It is so gorgeous. That is my favorite expression that they, my favorite verse that they put in any of their boxes ever. They don't have the same ones every year because I'm kind of obsessed with them. And uh, I think those make great little gifts. I did get a handful of them. And then I did buy these buckets. I'm also obsessed with them. I love this one is probably my very favorite and I'm going to probably add it to my Bohemian coffee bar post Valentine's Day for I don't know what but something because I just I love it it's covered in butterflies I mean I don't need an excuse but I have to be honest I think they're all really gorgeous I feel like they deserve to have plants in them if you have like a patio they're so adorable for plants or growing herbs in your window I love this one it's super very a pioneer woman looking but I'm going to probably be making baskets not baskets but just putting little you know again presents together for people you put a couple of things in here you put it in a gift bag those little bags that are like treat bags and the basket itself is nice for something or you can get one of those um boxes of seeds from the dollar a pair of gloves in here and one of those little shovels and put it in one of the tote one of the little plastic goodie bags and that is a very cute little mother's day gift for like under five dollars really cute to do it i really love the colors all together they're so adorable for under five dollars i have a really i just came up with the cutest diy to make with these so i got like a bunch of these like maybe like 30 and I bought every style they had that I, I think I bought every style they had. I actually liked every single kind that, this is my favorite though. I wish they had more variations of butterflies, but that is, oh no, there's one more, more item you guys. And here it is. I did hold this before, but I hold another one because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. This is the um, ribbon from the collection of the Dollar Tree ribbon that has these carrots in it. And I think it's really cute and rustic and burlap with orange and green you cannot go wrong okay guys that's everything that i have to share right now with you in this haul but there are still like seven bags of things and this was like four bags so i i have like two more hauls basically this four dollar tree shopping spree was really four hauls that i'm trying my best to get out to you Things are a little better on this side, so I'm definitely going to get them done sooner than later. I'm sorry for the delay. I'm grateful you guys are here. I hope I shared with you something that you enjoyed watching or gave you a new perspective on it. Or definitely, definitely, definitely check out the Dollar Tree book section. I mean, I am in love with some of the books that I have found lately. They are just killing it this year. And their signs. Just so many amazing things are happening at the Dollar Tree. And there's a lot of makeup out that I'm seeing. I actually am in a blizzard, but I cannot wait to get to the Dollar Tree to get, my hair is like crazy. Do you guys see what's going on here? I just, I just didn't really do anything with it. Should have put it in a ponytail. Anyway, um, I'm so happy that I'm getting done with this haul because I can't wait for the snow to melt and to get back to the Dollar Tree. I got to get through this to, before I could shop more. That's for sure. This haul has to be done before I can buy more things. And I'm seeing a lot of makeup and I need to find it. So 
I'm glad you guys are here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting my channel. I'm almost at 900, so if you feel like sharing this video with a friend, that would be wonderful. The more the merrier. And for all the people who are new here um, and have never been here before, consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you for watching. And as always, guys, stay safe and stay savvy. Bye-bye.